What is up guys, Simon from Bravis.com. I've done a lot of tutorials in the past about stepper motors, how to control them and stuff, but I've never actually looked into the micro stepping of a stepper motor. So today we're gonna look at that, what's involved, and also what the trade-off is when you start doing micro stepping with a stepper motor. You see most stepper motors that we buy on Amazon or that are readily available are what's called 1.8 degrees or 200 steps per revolution steppers. So what that means is that to do a full revolution of the shaft, it takes 200 full steps. Now, micro-stepping, what it does, it actually gives you an option to actually multiply those steps. Now, what that does is that it makes the rotation a lot more precise and smooth. But there is something that you lose when you start doing micro-stepping. So we're gonna look at that today. We're gonna test it out. I'm gonna show it to you on the bench. And uh, yeah, so first, let's go see the setup. All right, so here's the setup we're gonna to use today. I have a regular Uno here. I'm using the regular EZ driver board that supports micro-stepping up to one eighth of a step. But you could also use its big brother, the big EZ driver, which will be able to drive bigger motors, but also provides an additional micro-stepping option up to one sixteenth of a step. As you can see here also, you can solder in some screw terminals to make everything easier to connect. Uh, also, I'm using an OLED screen to show which micro-stepping we're at and a tack switch to actually switch between those. Now, as the motor will be rotating, I'll be able to, on the fly, change the micro-stepping option and we will see the result of what that does. I'm also using the analog slider to control the direction and the speed of the stepper motor. Now, I'm using the easy driver here, but almost every stepper driver has a micro-stepping option. It, they're a little bit different, but they always have pins that if you put high or low as a combination, it will choose a different stepping option. As you can see, the easy driver here has two, two of those pins, MS1 and MS2, and depending if I put them low or high, it will choose a different stepping, and we will see that in the code. So there you go. That's the setup. So now let's go look at the code, and then we'll come back and test everything out. Alright, so here's the code we're going to use today. It looks a lot like the last tutorial I did. I only added the tack switch and the OLED screen to the setup. So it should be pretty familiar if you watched the last tutorial. So we're going to go through this fairly fast. Uh, I'm including the UHG library. That's for controlling the OLED screen. I've done a couple of tutorials on that. You can check them out right here. And we're naming it OLED screen so we can refer to it in the code later. Then we have the Excel stepper, of course, that we've used a lot. And next is the easy driver connection. So these are the pins that everything is connected to. MS1 and MS2 are the pins that we're going to use to change the stepping, the micro stepping. And then we do the setup. And here you can see, depending if I put MS1 and MS2 low or high, it will give full step by default if you don't connect anything to the easy driver. Or if you do high and low, then it's a half step, quarter step and one eighth of a step. If you were using a different one or the big easy driver that we just saw before, then we would go up to one sixteenth of a step. And this is the pin the analog slider is connected to and my tack switch is connected to pin seven on the Arduino. Then we have a couple of variables here to uh, actually debounce the switch. Uh, the current stepping will keep track of where the MS1 and MS2 is, uh, depending on how many times we click the tack switch and more variables here to actually keep track of stuff. Uh, then the main setup, uh, serial begin, I don't need. I was using that when I was testing the code. Stepper direction is equal to the stepper current position. Like I said in the last tutorial, I could have just set that to zero. But if I use the current position at startup, it will be equal to zero. Then we have our pin mode here. Uh, the change switch is the tack switch is an input pull up. We need that. MS1, MS2, the direction pin and the step pin on the easy driver. That will be an output on the Arduino. Then at the beginning, we start with MS1 low and low to put it to full steps. If you want to rotate the screen, you could just uncomment this little part here, depending on which orientation you put your OLED screen. Then we're selecting the font to use on the OLED, set the contrast to 100. And then at the beginning, we're putting stepping is equal to full to display on the OLED, because that will be the case at the startup. All right, so then we get to the main loop. So we're checking if I click the tack switch. Then I have a delay of 100 here that's to debounce the switch. The switch state is now changed to 1, indicating that I clicked the switch. And the current stepping is plus plus. So it was 0 at the beginning, now it's equal to 1. Uh, then we do a switch case on the current stepping. So if it is equal to 1, I write MS1 and MS2 I low, which will correspond to half a step. And on the OLED, I actually indicate that this is the case. 
And now if it's equal to two, then it's a different uh, one. So low high, which equals stepping of one quarter and so on and so on until I get to one eighth. Now, if it's equal to four, then I go back to low low and the current stepping is equal to zero to restart the procedure again. And the stepping is equal to full again. And then I get to the slider, which is exactly the same code I used in the last one. So the more I move the slider one side or another, the stepper will increase the speed moving right or moving left, depending on where I'm moving the slider itself. If I'm near the metal, then the speed will be equal to zero to stop the motor. Now, as you can see here, the max speed is 700 uh, to the right or to the left, depending on where I move the uh, slider. And we'll see the effect of micro stepping on the speed of the motor itself when we go do the testing right after this. Uh, so there you go. So that's the whole code. So I'm going to upload that. And now let's go test it out. All right, so I uploaded the code. Everything is powered up, ready to go. So I'm going to start at full, as you can see on the OLED. So I'm going to push to actually start the rotation. And that's at full steps, 700 steps. So now I'm going to change it to half. As you could tell, it slowed down a little bit. One quarter, one eighth. Now, of course, the rotation is a lot smoother, but I'm only doing 700 steps a second. And back to full. Let me just try it. Turn it off. There we go. Now, the big trade-off when doing micro-stepping is that your maximum speed will be affected. Uh, the Arduino Uno with the Excel stepper library the maximum it can do is 4,000 steps a second. And that's if you're not doing anything else. Right now, I'm writing to an OLED screen, I'm monitoring the analog, and I'm communicating with the easy driver. Basically, I will never achieve 4,000 steps using the Arduino Uno. The most I could do for my testing is about 1,000 steps maximum. So 1,000 full step will result in a rotation that's much faster at full than if I'm at a quarter step. I'm still sending a thousand, but I can't send more because the Arduino Uno is not fast enough. So the big trade-off when doing micro-stepping is that your maximum speed will be affected and the big bottleneck will be your microcontroller that you use. Now in the next year, I'm gonna start using more powerful microcontrollers in my tutorials so we can achieve faster speeds even when using micro-stepping. So there you go, guys. The big thing about micro-stepping is that you get a lot more resolution it's more precise, but your maximum speed will be affected because your microcontroller cannot send an infinite number of steps. So there you go, guys. So uh, let's go back to the main camera and wrap things up. All right, so that's all for today, guys. Hopefully you found this interesting. I want to take the opportunity to thank everyone that have been following me on YouTube. I've been doing this for five years now, and I will keep doing these videos for you guys. And it, when I read your comments and everything, it means a lot to me that people are getting something out of this. And also, of course, I want to wish everyone out there Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, uh, but most importantly, a safe one. So as always, my name is Ivan, and I hope to see you guys in the next year. Take care.